Are we live? What's going on, everyone? Okay. Wait for a couple people to show back up. I am so sorry about that. I had to go deal with a little family crisis going on. And that is what it is. So I noticed while I was uh, in between takes here tonight that there were a bunch of comments I didn't see previously. So thank you to everyone for the uh, recommendations on the elbow pain. So no worries, you just got here. Well, all right, you missed the drama. My son somehow uh, contacted a uh, YouTuber, a very relatively prominent YouTuber. So anyway, don't know how he did that. Hi, Vikara, Vikira. I don't know how to say people's names. Nope, don't do that. There we go. If I screw up your name, I'm sorry. I try my best. All right. So if you missed it in the previous stream, we have, uh, this was full of rejected rings. And we were separating them out into about eight or nine different uh, ring sizes. And what happened was that I had a bunch of uh, stainless blackened rings from uh, the Ring Lord that didn't make the cut. And so the Vikira, okay. Hi, Gord, how you doing? Thanks for joining us. All right. So I had a bunch of rings from the Ring Lord, and I had a uh, container full of rejects, this one, and I dumped them all into a tumbler. So they were already mixed in together, and there's eight or nine different ring sizes that I had just dumped. You're gonna pretend the sound is on? Can can you guys not hear me? Can you hear me now? How about now? I'm just kidding, my voice isn't that deep. Well, it is right now because I'm sick, but it's not you. Oh, you're watching the hubsies matter, but I would too. I would totally understand where your hubby, your hubby is coming from. You can hear me. Sweet. If you didn't watch the uh, 20 minutes previously, you wouldn't know. Or if you didn't watch uh, the stream last night, you wouldn't know that we have a microphone on the way and a webcam. Right? I should probably show you guys what I'm doing. You can hear me loud as day. All right. I'll take loud as day. We are working on a bottle wrap. This is going to be a wrap for a standard wine bottle for a friend of mine so that he can go to the Renaissance Fair and run around with a bottle of wine. And we're going to try and make it uh, as, uh, I don't know about it, as fancy as possible, but uh, we're going to try and make it look nice, you know? Got a couple of ideas rummaging around in the old brain. All right. You could hear me right from the top. Okay, good. 
Uh, you know, I mean, sometimes the wires get crossed. And Hi, Kara. And, you know, the things you think you set up to work don't work, you know. It, it happens. I'm not above a hardware malfunction. It could happen to me, you know. So, I apologize for the earlier uh, interruption. Going to have to try and figure out what happened there. Essentially, essentially what happened is bad parenting on my part for uh, letting my son run around with a tablet that had way too much access to everything on it. And we're in the, you know, this Christmas, we're going to get him a new tablet and it's going to have a whole lot uh, more restrictions. Right. So. So we, we were in the midst of solving this problem and, you know, our worst fears were realized. A tiny raid. Nice is the new fancy. All right. A small raid from Bracken Mail. I was on that stream. I was on, on it and then. It went out and I got called away to go put up a Christmas tree, right? And then when I got back on, Josh had done like five and a half hours. I was like, holy crap. I'm exhausted of talking after an hour. You know, I run out of things to say fairly quickly. So five and a half hours is not, yeah, it's, it's not on my list of things to do. An hour, I can do an hour, you know. All right. So. Now that the family crisis is over, we can sit down and get to work and, you know, maybe, maybe get some stuff done tonight. I can't wait for this new camera to get here. Is that regular pliers and then needle nose? Yes. I have a pair of Wubbers and that's about as fancy as I get. I was worried that the teeth on uh, these might cause some marring on the stainless, but I mean, it looks okay to me so far. I don't see anything concerning. And these are, I got these from my grandpa. And then I've, I've no idea where I got this pair from, but they have served me well. They're my go-to for stainless rings. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. So, we've got the Black Friday Cyber Monday sale going on over at mailworks.com. It's going well. We've got new equipment on the way. Can't wait for that to show up. Let's adjust that just a skosh. A skosh is a Wisconsin unit of measurement, I've found. I'm sure it's used in other places, but it means just a small amount. What do I do when I'm not working with stainless? Um... I'm working on a computer, right? So I have very, I have a couple brass and bronze pieces, right? I have some aluminum over there. I've given most of it away. 
one of my coworkers' kids was kind of interested in like learning about chain mail, so I gave him a bunch of rings. Um, when I work with smaller stainless, I use a pair of Wubbers, and then I think I got these at Home Depot. They work. So, I, I mean. Take your take your pick of pliers, you know. I think I got these from Hobby Lobby. But I primarily work in stainless and so I ninety percent of the time I'd say I'm working uh, I'm working with with these just because I don't have uh, like I know a lot of people use Tronix and Nipex or something Yeah, I have quite the collection of pliers. I mean, you know, after 24 years of doing this and collecting supplies and tools, I have quite the collection of supplies, tools, and pliers and projects. And, you know, it's not like I started out with all that. There we go. One of these days, we're not going to have to flip the computer screen. Oh, I, okay. <laughs> I remember what I put up the screen for. But I'll I'll do another row and then we'll I will show you what uh Hi Barb. I'm so sorry about uh that interruption there. Thank you for coming back. I guess uh, Josh had some trouble on his stream earlier too. I think he was on take three by the time I was uh, done putting up the Christmas tree. And so hopefully, you know, our internet stays good and totally okay. Okay, thank you. I do appreciate it. You know, sometimes stuff comes up. Hopefully we don't go to a take three. It's past my bedtime, so we. If this is if this doesn't work out, then we'll just stream another night. You're stoked to get your rings for your your ornament. Okay, now half an hour ago, um, you would put a comment on my last stream, and I answered it um during my little break there but uh yes you only need to wrap the outside of an ornament right like so okay it doesn't have to adhere as closely to the uh, christmas ball as this one does it doesn't have to be tight on there or anything you're just making a decoration for a Christmas ball ornament is really all you're doing. So throw that ring away. Since I have the, the screen up, I I want to show you guys something. I just want to let you all know that our hooded blankets are like 20% off right now. 20? Yeah. And they're available at mailworks.com. Now these are chainmail themed macro fleece blankets. They're very fluffy. 
They're very warm. But uh, I have one of those in the house and it's sale time and I want to make sure I mentioned it while I was on camera. Mwahaha, <laughs> evilly rings hands together. All right. I can look forward to to what that means. I don't know what it means. <clears throat> I'm just glad people are, are participating. I know um, similar to the pumpkin themed uh, chain mail carving, you know, we've got four or five people competing already or entering. Entering? I think that's what the word we're looking for. So I'm just happy that uh, people are you know, playing along. It's fun. It is fun to give away stuff. The, the girl that won the pumpkin carving contest got her blanket the other day and she sent some pictures and they were awesome. She got a big pumpkin themed uh, blanket, similar to the one I just showed you. Very fluffy, but hers was not hooded. It was just a like 80 inch by 60 inch blanket. So, the CDC has been alerted due to that cough. Yeah. Yep. I'm not worried about it. I Renee's a microbiologist by trade and she just got accepted into school to go and uh, get her second master's in epidemiology. So I'm, you know, if anyone was going to be putting me under quarantine, it would probably be her. I have no idea how long I need to make this ribbon before I start moving up, but I don't think we're there yet. I need someone in this house to drink a bottle of wine so that uh, I can use it as a guide. We'll probably have an empty bottle of wine sometime around Christmas, right? So between now and then we can guess. We can guess what size we need, you know? It's so much easier to work with these rings, with these larger pliers. I'm not gonna say it's effortless, but last night my arms were quite fresh and ready to go. And after, after making like, I think it was about that much of the patch right there, my arms were very uh, sore this morning. So it took me, I don't know, a couple of hours to realize that, oh, I'd been using the small pliers on these and I didn't have to, if I didn't want to, I could use the big pliers to make my life easier. So, it's going much better tonight, to be quite honest. There's one almost gone, you just need to cook more. Honey, I don't know what that means, but okay. What else? I don't know. I 
figure probably if we if we do that right like that's oh where's my light let's see here let's get some light on this that's probably close right there to bottle size if i had to guess right Um, that's not going to stay there. I wonder. Nope, that wants to slide off. All right. I think that light is going to fall. I have, I have a light here, right? And it doesn't want to stay. Ah! We'll put some of my my memorabilia coins on there. There, now we have light. A little more light, anyway. All right. So probably another inch, inch and a half, and then we'll start. Moving it up, because here's what I think we're going to do, right? We're going to make a band to go around the bottle of 18 gauge, 3 16 And on top and bottom of that band, we're going to put like an interwoven 4-in-1 or some elf weave, right? To make a band, right? right before right before the neck narrows and then like at the bottom of the bottle okay and then we'll do some more 18 gauge 3 16 up the top of the bottle and On the bottom, I don't know what we'll do for the bottom, but uh, we'll make it nice and clean so you know bottles don't fall out when you slip slip a bottle in here. Why are some rings considered rejects? Okay. When a ring is machined. There's a couple things that can happen, right? The ring can be out of round and make it an oval ring or a misshapen ring, right? A ring can, uh, the ends of a ring can be too sharp, right? See the ends of that ring there? This one's fine, but there's others that have super sharp points on them. Okay, and you don't want to use those for really anything, right? Try to fix my hat on the camera. It doesn't work. Nah, that's close enough. Um, and then the pile of rings that I'm using were all black and stainless steel, um, but the black application didn't take. And so they were tossed aside because I couldn't use them in the project I was putting them all on. And that was uh, a motorcycle vest I made. <coughs> so Anytime you got a miscolored ring, misshapen ring, a ring who's uh, where the saw or the machine took the uh, or made the edges too sharp, you know, you can't really use that ring. So the sharp, the rings with the sharp points on them, 
they got to be filed down or you know if you can get a tumbler to dole the ends of the ring that's ideal but most of the time they're just too sharp and they got to be put aside All right, Demented Armory, you have a good night, too. Thank you for hanging out. Go check out mailworks.com. Get yourself something nice for Christmas. Shameless plug. Isn't that what, I mean, that's what all this is about anyway. You guys can sit here and watch me make chain mail all day long. But, I mean, the whole reason why I started these is to make content for my store, so that one day I would have a lot of great content up on my website for people to find, so. I mean, I'm just sitting here anyway, talking to myself. Might as well get it on camera. All right, that's nice. Nice little, little, nice little four in one piece right there. I don't think we have to make it too much bigger. Before we start moving up, because much longer than that, we're gonna, we're gonna be too long for the bottle. And I think I actually, I will have enough rings to do most of this. Oops. Forgot a ring on there. All right, I got one more blanket and a hoodie to show you guys tonight. And all of it can be found at mailworks.com where we're having our Black Friday sale right now. Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Come on. And of course, half this pile of rings is open. So every time that uh, I go to grab another ring, there's five rings looped through it already. I did it again. Dang it, Bobby. How would you make a bracelet for someone who looks like a Wookiee? Is there a certain pattern I would go with to keep pinching to a minimum? Mm. I can't even do it right now. That's how sore my throat is. All right. Um, no, all, all patterns pinch about the same. It's just like any other bracelet, really. The uh, as long as you're managing your closures well, any any pattern will be good. And what you don't want to end up with is, I'd show you. Oh, let's see here, a bracelet where the ends of the ring look like that, you know. Call it a barrel monkeys when they all catch together. Absolutely. That is absolutely what it is. So when you're making a jewelry piece, you got to mind your closures, right? And 
the fast you will you will get faster at successfully closing a ring the longer you make chainmail. And by successful, I mean that the the closure is even on both on you know top and bottom and then left side, right side, right? Yeah, tumbling tumbling and polishing pieces helps a lot. You know? And then of course there's always there's always the fact that if you get a piece that rips out your hair, just wear it for a long time until, you know, it strips you bald. Then you don't have to worry about it. Right? No? No, is that not uh is that not ideal? <laughs> I had a couple necklaces that uh pinched me. But that never lasted very long. And if you get a tumbled polished piece like Kara said, um it really does help a lot, a tremendous amount, as a matter of fact. So, so if you're, if you've got arm hair like Chewbacca, have no fear. There's no shortage of chainmail bracelets that you can wear. There's a multitude of weaves and materials that your bracelet can be made out of, and it shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't have any issue on a well, on a well-made piece, right? Now, that's one of the things that the chainmail community kind of pushes on to new people, you know, it's like, get your closures right, okay? Don't use crap materials for jewelry. And try to make a nicely completed project. You know? All right. This Christmas ornament is probably a little bit smaller than a wine bottle. But it's a good measure that tells us so we can start going up with this. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, like we can stop lengthening this and just start adding rows. All right. And if that, uh, you know, if we're short, We'll figure that out. We're not, I'm not worried about it tonight. I'll find a bottle here in the next week or so to actually measure it. That bottle might be full of wine. So maybe we'll drink a bottle of wine on camera and make some chain mail to go around it. We'll see what happens. Where are we at here? It's kind of nice having that overhead light, and I was able to see that ring closure real good. Need a couple more of those around here. I really can't wait for an overhead camera with good lighting and nice zoom so that uh, we can get some real good shots. Like I'm not making anything special here, you know. It's a very basic weave with a, with some, some gr hematite colored stainless steel, you know. So, 
But some of the stuff that I want to make, it would be really nice to have a really good camera in order to capture the moment. You know what I mean? All right. Yeah, barrel of monkeys right there. What about a magnifying glass light combo? I have been informed as I looked into those. I want one. I have a friend who uses one. And uh, that would work for me individually working on this by myself, right? For people watching the stream, right? I'm not gonna put a magnifying glass and try to look at stuff through a camera. You know what I mean? Like magnifying glass here, camera here, me going like that, you know? <clears throat> I have been told that the magnifying spectacles with the lights on them are the best way to go. And this was uh, told to me by a mailer who I have a lot of respect for, who is a hell of an artist. And um, I am going to take her word for it. So fortunately right now, I don't really need the light or the magnifying glass to see what I'm doing. Some of these rings, and this is this is a sign of my age. Some of these rings that I used to crank out, you know, 15 years ago, they are looking really small lately. So I will figure something out about that. All right. All right, come on. Of course, right as I say, I don't need the light. Get a ring slip. All right, let's see here. What's up next? I have some pajama pants over here that one of these nights on stream, I'm gonna sew on camera. Cause they have a, they have a hole in the pocket. All right, up next, we have our purple dragon scale hooded hoodie. We have a purple dragon scale hoodie. I'm gonna put this on. All right. Got my arm stuck. This is a 3X. It's nice and comfy. And it looks awesome. I look amazing. Got a little zipper on it. All right. See, isn't that? Doesn't that look good? I wear this stuff all day long. I love it. But you can find that right now at mailworks.com. And uh, right now they are um, 59, 59 dollars $59.97. They're $20 off. 20% off. Yeah, 20% off. They're nice and warm. Very comfortable. Go to mailworks.com. <coughs> mm. Is that Sherpa lined? It is Sherpa lined. Excuse me. Or macro fleece or very, very fuzzy. Let me show you. Right? Like all that just traps the heat in and keeps you nice and warm. Really, as long as it's not windy, they're they're very warm. They're not they're not windbreakers or anything, but they're very comfortable. I have two. I, I like them. 
Well, no. I mean, I guess I have that one now, too. That one was a sizing issue. Someone returned it. So I guess it's mine now, right? Um, and they got they got something else. But I think because that's a three X and it's big on me, and I'm five nine, two hundred fifty pounds. Let me double check something here because it used. Our hoodies used to only go up to 3x but yes now they go up to four so we have 4x hoodies which is nice then we get uh we have Leggings that are, they go up to 6X, right? And we got hats. I got a pretty big head. That's probably like, that's probably like a 2X hat right there. I don't remember off the top of my head what else we have in like big and tall. But we're getting more, you know, hopefully next year. There's big and tall and then there's plus sized. And I don't know. I don't know if plus size has like the marketing I want for it. Right, like the the image that comes into your head when you say plus sized, right? Like, is that the appropriate thing to call it? I don't know. We might we might consult a marketing expert on that. Know what I mean? All right, we're just building another row here. Double check. Where's my mouse? There we go. Oh. Don't do that. I took some mucinex earlier to help with this cold. And I tell you what, like my throat is dry. It's all good out. But I can still smell and taste stuff. You know? So I'm 90% sure it's just a cold. I didn't have any fevers or anything. Wasn't really coughing up stuff. So I'm not too concerned. Consult marketing expert on that. Yeah, Paige and Nathan Frazier. Yeah. Yeah, but okay, so don't get me wrong, I love Nathan, but he'd tell me to call him like uh he'd be like, you need to call him fat leggings, like P H A T. And I don't know if I'm comfortable calling him that either. I'm sure he could come up with something else. But uh, that's that's kind of like I thought about that, right? It's like running the idea past him. And uh, that is how I just thought he would respond.
I don't know. Maybe I'll maybe I'll uh, I'll message him and see what he says. Fat is not superior to plus size. You prefer plus size, Kara? Okay. I'll leave it a plus size for now. And Nathan's, don't get me wrong, Nathan's a great marketer, and I'm sure he could come up uh, with something. But that is, like, I didn't ask him because that is how, in my head, he would have answered. And it's just, it just became an issue the other day when I was thinking about it. So it's not like I've been mulling this over for weeks or anything. I'm not really worried about it. I just think that plus size is, uh, kind of lame, you know? Like it's not really specific as to what it means. It's very vague, you know? So big and tall and plus size, they're just like these vague concepts that kind of cover some people and their body shapes and sizes. So I, you know, I'm just thinking maybe uh, something a bit more apt that gets people excited when they see it. You know, because like you asked earlier if there was if they were uh, the hoodies were lined in Sherpa, right? And I've been told that that's confusing before too. I should call it uh, micro fleece, right? That's really not what it is, right? Like a micro fleece blanket is different than the Sherpa lining that these have, right? Now, are these hoodies lined with you know the bodies of the Sherpas that died on Mount Everest? No. That's, you know, that's what always comes to mind when I think Sherpa. Macro fleece kind of works. You know, it's not micro fleece, it's macro fleece. So these are, these are the fun things that uh, I get to contemplate as I go about telling everyone about my products well they can't feel or touch them you know it's like what is what is the best word to describe what this is exactly oh and hey vic thanks for joining us i appreciate you hanging out tonight i do Uh, yeah, micro fleece is short, very fine fibers, and all the fibers are the same length. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is longer. Longer. It's longer than micro fleece. It's not. They're not as quite as fluffy as the blankets. But they're close. So, I don't know. I don't know. Just need uh, to use words that everybody, uh, so that, you know, when, when you say it, everybody knows exactly what you mean. Right? Doesn't matter what that word is. It just needs to be universally understood. Is Sherpa is politically incorrect. When I hear it, I think that stuff that's textured like sheep's wool. Right. And I think that that is why it is in kind of an industry standard. I don't know. Is it politically incorrect? Because like a Sherpa is someone who carries up supplies on Mount Everest for people climbing Mount Everest. They're the Nepalese people that live at the base of the mountain. At least I think they're Nepalese. Nepalesians. 
Um, and so like I think that's their job title right like I don't think it's politically incorrect necessarily I just think it's inaccurate that's all What, what are the best words to use? Ones that are, it's, well, it's, you know, it's, it's as, and, uh, it's as vague as the word chain mail, right? Now here's one of my pet peeves, right? People that argue over what the uh, proper term is. Is it male? Is it chain male? Is chain male all one word? And is that, um, which one is the most accurate, right? This argument has been played or played out on, you know, a hundred different threads of multiple forums it's a pretty irrelevant argument as to what you call it right the common lexicon that allows you to identify the uh ringed armor that knights wore you know is chainmail if you google chainmail you will come up with this. If you Google male, M-A-I-L-L-E, right? You'll get some of this. You also get like um, the mustard, okay? Right, male or male. And it's, I asked someone like, what was, what was the point in, um, <laughs> you teach English? Okay. My my sister's an English teacher. I'm I'm familiar with the antics uh, or the semantics you guys can delve into. I've 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 been uh present at a few of those lectures. Um I asked someone, it's like what what was the point in even arguing about it? And she's like, Oh, we want to preserve the language. I'm like, but male M-A-I-L-L-E is French and the uh um, not Gaul, the Etruscans, right? A, um, Celtic people of some sort, right? Were the ones who invented chain mail in the first place, according to like what I've seen on the internet. I don't know what you've seen. You could have seen something else, but like the last time I checked, it was the Etruscans who invented chain mail, a Celtic people, right the oldest known piece of chain mail found was um like in ireland or something so i don't know where the etruscans lived i don't know who did it first but you know if you're going to claim a french word is how to properly call something invented by the etruscans i you know i just i question the validity of your argument that you need to preserve the language that's all Right. Anyway, I think it's a dumb argument, but that kind of plays into, you know, plus size, Sherpa. What's the best word to use? It all just drives me nuts. And with that, speaking of Celtic people, no, we already did the Celtic people one. All right, we'll do the non-Celtic people one. All right. Here is our chainmail cube hooded blanket, right? 
It's very nice. It's very soft. Colors are very vibrant. It's very fluffy. You got fluffy, colorful. I don't know what else you could ask for in a blanket. They're from Etruscia. It's next to it's next to Atlantis. Is that your blanket? No. Um, you should have one on the way. Did you win a drawing? <clears throat> that is like you'll get one like that if you are who I think you are. I'd have to look up who won that drawing. That's who I'm assuming you need an invoice. Get with me offline if you need an invoice for something. Tara, did you order something for me? I send out a lot of stuff, so don't like. It's my fan. I'm so lost right now. Oh, okay. You told me. Oh, okay. 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 Get with me offline and uh, we will make sure you have everything you need. I know who you are now. Oh my gosh. That's, it's even random that I just remember that at all. There's blankets everywhere in your cold. Definitely get one from Mailworks. They're super warm. They are. All right. I want to thank everyone for coming to hang out. This is how far along we've gotten so far on this little bottle wrap. Right? I'll find a bottle. We'll make sure that it's the length is correct to go around it. We'll add some fancier weaves to it. We'll put some leather on it. And, and gosh darn it, we're going to make a nice uh, bottle wrap there. All right. So thanks for hanging out, guys. Go to mailworks.com, Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Get yourself something nice. Get your family something nice. All right. And I will talk to you guys. I'll probably do this again tomorrow night. Right. And if the family comes in and, like, you know, starts calling, if my son starts calling random people on the internet again, uh, you know, we'll see how it goes. All right, I will talk to you guys later. Have a good night.